Hi everybody, welcome back. Today in our Atari 8 Base series, we're going to work on the Indus GT drive. I'm going to disassemble it, clean it. I got a power supply here, a 12 volt center tip, positive, DC positive power, DC power supply, say that 20 times. I'm going to open this up first and verify that this is center tip positive. And if so, then I will test it power wise. So first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to disassemble this and see what we got going in here. It looks like this has two screws here, two here, and then two in the back. It's like fascinating to how the, well maybe they're just replacements. I was going to say they all slid, but they all seem to slide the same direction, so maybe they're replacements. So let's see, can I use my power tool today? Nope, it doesn't work. I have to use a manual screwdriver, go old fashioned. So the Indus GT drive is fascinating how it works. It, what you'll see when we get to it, that the front has an LED display that tells you what track it's on. It has a whole bunch of little doodads and gizmos, but it's actually a lot faster, more powerful. You can switch between single sided or double density, single density, whether it's drive one, two, three, or four, which I thought the Atari could handle more than four drives. I thought it was just daisy changes kept going, like one through nine. Maybe not. Maybe it's only one through four. I need to get some more SIO cables. I only have one SIO cable that I'm using for the drives, and I need to get some more. If you didn't happen to notice, I got a bad, on this side, bad cut on my forehead here. When I was working on the Atari 1010 drive, a 1050 drive. I came in here to the workroom to get some um, parts or to get the discs and or the power supply and I found a shelf and it really tore me up. So let's just test this here. And do I want to take it all the way apart to get well, I'm gonna take it all the way apart anyway. So yeah let's pull the drive out completely. Ooh we got this nice little spider nest there. Let's take the drive out of here. It looks like we have one screw here, one there. Looks like those are the only two screws that are holding the front to this and then you have the four screws on the side. So let's see how that works. This right here, if I remember correctly, this is a standard controller that you can plug another drive into. See how you got that here? I think I can plug a second drive into this one here. I believe. Because I recall a long time ago when I had my Ataris up in Alaska back in 1990, it would have been 1989. I had, I don't know if it was an Indus or a Percom, but I had a drive. Oh, we got this here, we gotta watch this. Okay, see how that right there comes off. I, oh, that's holding, that's the little shock thing for that. Okay. I had an, either an Indus or a Percom drive that allowed me. But it, wait, what was, I can't remember which one it was. But I, it allowed me to daisy chain. I daisy chained a second drive to it from my bulletin board. I actually daisy chained a Coleco Atom drive that I opened up and disconnected the controller from the drive and used it in the power supply. So what we got here? drive head is stuck. I might have to pull that apart and clean it better further. All right, let's get you unplugged here. One. Okay, that takes that off there. Cuz it's got a little control panel here. I don't know. I mean, I guess you could turn right protect on and off drive type. You can switch the drives, the tracks, errors. It's interesting, it's got all these little controls on there. 
I do have, there is a manual online on eBay that I saw that I want to look at getting for this. All right, then we have this here. Do I want to take the base off of it too? Might as well, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the, the circuit board off of it so it's just nice and easy to get. To, oh, I have to anyways, duh, to get to that. So let's do that. Let's take the controller board off the bottom here. And remember to make sure that I stay centered on the... Okay, it's just stuck in there. I didn't want to pull too hard and break something, so I'll go really gentle. It looks like it comes, once you get it out here, Yeah, and it comes up that way. Oh, we got us a bug nest down there, spider nest, another one. Piece of plastic from a kiss. That's the notch that you cut off of a floppy disk to make it um, right protect. So we found us a piece of plastic from the right protect. Then we found us a right protect tape there for there. So both of those are in this. Now this came from a different person than the 800 and the 1050 that I already worked on. This came from a Facebook marketplace that I picked up all three of them together. Okay, so now let's find out what is the center. I'm believing the center is going to be positive. Now I'm going to look and see if I can figure out which one is the negative rail on here. Let's see if I can figure out which one it is. Mm -hmm. How do I figure out which one's negative? I mean, I could look up something online to find out which one is negative there, I guess. Yeah, what is this thing here? This is a LM340T or is it an 83 Let's find out. LM340T. center one we'll get the multimeter and we'll do a continuity test and find out where ground is over here see if ground is the outside or the inside make sure she's going to make some noise all right so ground is a center okay ground is fine there and input is going to be all right so it is positive center so we do know that so we do know that's going to work i've already tested the power supply here it's brand new i bought it on amazon for another project i didn't use i tested to make sure it works and actually you know what i'm going to plug it in right now that i can see down here i just want to it should yeah it makes good contact all throughout okay so we know this is ready to get cleaned up and so we'll put this over to the side over here for cleaning. All these parts have to be cleaned up. What about this here? Does this, that does come off. It's got two screws that take it off. Okay. So we have that there and everything else is good. Oh, I, oh, 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 that's where these, that's where this was going. That's where this went right in here. This held these things in place, the little pivots, the pivots are missing. I got one. I wonder if the other one's floating around inside the drive somewhere. We'll find out. So these can be cleaned. This can be cleaned. These can be cleaned. Well, those I'll clean by hand. This can be cleaned. The base can be cleaned. And now we have the disk drive itself. Let's see. trying to see if that part was in here flopping around but one screw here that holds this down I'm taking this off because the read write head isn't moving so I want to gently get that thing loose let's see it's stuck here
Oh, the stepper motor was stuck. There it goes. Now it's moving. Yeah, I'm sitting for so long. The stepper motor is stuck. I'm gonna give it a little work back and forth. I'll lube this up like I did the other one. All right. So that's good there. I was hoping to find like that little. There it is. There she is. It's stuck behind. It's stuck in here. It's there. See if you can see it right there. See it? That's the other pivot axle bearing, whatever you want to call it, that is for the front door. And it's stuck in here. There we go. Stuck in there. Yeah, something like that flopping around inside your disk drive is not a good thing. Alright, so that's what we have here. This is part of that that's going to go back in here the ground circuit. So we're going to spray that down and wipe it down good. This goes for that there. All right. So we've got it disassembled now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the sink and I'm going to scrub these other parts down. And when I, well actually I'll bring my thing over here and I'll scrub the parts here, but let me find something to round up these screws first. All right. So what I've done is I've taken the case over to the utility sink and I sprayed it down really really good to get rid of the cobwebs and stuff and most of their dirt on it and then I'm drying them in the fan right now then I'll come over and I'll scrub them down some more so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the compressed air from the shop back and I'm going to blow all these out we'll get rid of this spider egg nest yeah don't know how old that is Okay, now I've noticed something that I'm positive is going to affect the drive being used. This is no longer, that is no longer connected to that. Let me get the little camera out here. Where's my, let's put the camera on it so, you, so I can show you a close up. Okay, so what I'm talking about is this wire right here is no longer connected to that. And then over here, sorry about the, that wire right there is no longer connected to that sensor. So, I'm going to have to do some soldering to connect those two wires back up. Now, they were disconnected before I blew any air on them. I didn't, I didn't make them come loose. They just were flopping loose. I noticed this one was sitting down here. This one was sitting down here all by itself, not touching anything. And then I looked and I saw that one was doing it too. So, I'm going to assume they broke with age. So, I'll have to solder them back on. This shouldn't be too hard. This right here, light sensor comes off of that. Should disconnect with that. Doesn't look like the, and this right here is just a, I believe this is just another light sensor that detects the index hole. So, have to remove both of them. Now this one looks to be held down by that screw there. I believe that's the only thing holding that there. I see no other screws. So I believe if I unscrew that, I'd be able to get it loose. And that one right there, this one's the easier one. So we'll go with that one first. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish cleaning up all the parts first. And then I'll be putting that together. Because I can then test the drive at the same time. So this I already cleaned that. Let's set that out of the side. This has been cleaned. So now it's going to be fixed. Make sure that it's on nice and clean. I mean, if we're gonna bring it, make it look good and repair it and everything, we gonna make it smell good too by cleaning all the dirt and grime and everything off of it and the spider nest. And I'm pretty sure this thing's covered in smoke because this came out of the same place as the 810 and that dirty 81050 drive. So we rinse this off here, then I'll rinse it and put it in front of the fan again.
Now I could do like other people do and take the Windex bottle and just spray it and wipe it down and say, ooh, clean. But this is a deep clean. I'll do the Windex bottle later. But this right here is the, let's get everything off of it clean. Because with a Windex, you're really not getting it off. You're just smearing it around if there's smoke on it. I mean, you really want to rinse it. You want to wash it. I mean, would you wash your dishes just using Windex? Probably not. All right, so I'm about ready to start reassembling these after cleaning them. But this case is a little worse for wear. I think I'm going to go hit it with some flat black paint, because that's what it is. And that will look better afterwards. So I'm going to do that, and then we'll go back to reassembling this. Okay, so the cover is now over there in front of the fan, drying off. Take it outside to spray it. Now I'm going to start reassembling things here. All right, so to assemble this, if we recall, it goes in like this. The power switch really should be like half on, half off to make it fit in here. Like that, and then it drops down in there in place. And we gotta get the little nose in there. And now we're there. Okay, so now we're gonna start assembling pieces back on here. I've been looking at these capacitors while I'm on here, but I don't see anything bad. So I'm going to assume everything else is good. I'm not going to do like others and start replacing capacitors immediately. Because if they're not bad, why replace them? So until I know that this doesn't work, I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to introduce a new problem to it. So the, we got the bases on now. Like I said, I got to spray this, blow this out. So I'm going to move that over there. This little washer that I said just happened to show up. I bet you that's what this is for. I bet you after they put it together, they realized they needed something to hold it down better. All right, that holds it in place. Okay, so we're good there. All right, everything's in. So that is assembled. And then this goes back in here, and we have to put the little pegs back in. That's what these hold right here. These hold those pegs in. I put a drop of crazy glue on the side of this one, each side here, and then some hot glue there holding it in place. That would work really well. So let's do that. And the hot glue will fill it in and hold as it, act as a hinge and hold it in place. It should. So we'll let that dry. Then we'll hot glue it. Let it dry. Don't you dare. Stay in the holes. Stay in there so you dry. And this goes on the outside of the case. So I don't need that yet. So we're getting close to where I'm going to start soldering this back together here in a moment. These two parts that came off. Which well, shouldn't be too hot, I don't think. It's just a wire. I think I can just tap solder and hold it in place. We'll see. Wait for this to heat up. Almost. Getting there. All right, so we should be hot enough now. Let's see what I'm going to do is I'm putting it on here, but I'm not going to let it touch the plastic. 
so that the glue is only over here holding it in place. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to solder that one. And I'm going to try to solder that one in place. But see, it has all these extra connectors on here that aren't used for anything, which is means this is basically just as a tandem drive. You know, while I'm looking, while I'm waiting that thing to heat up, remember I do have this 1050 old smoky over here. I could, but let me see if I can fix it first. If I can't, I can always pull out the tandem drive out of old smoky. Prefer not to, but this is a better drive than the 10, 10, 1050 drive is any day of the week. This is much more expensive and much more desirable. I believe this little scent. Oh, that one's off too. So okay, well, we're not. We're gonna have to take the sensor out. Yeah, the sensor's just corroded and falling apart there. Ew. So, it does look, see, it just, that one just fell right off of there. So, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to find old Smokey over here. I'm going to take Smokey apart and see what it has. Okay, so I opened up Smokey, which it is the same drive mechanism, but, and there's a big but, it's missing a lot of stuff. It does not have the sensor here. This is jammed. Smokey's a mess. Um, it does have this here though, so I could just pull that one out and replace it. But you know, instead of doing that, I'm going to take Smokey's going to be a refurb. I'm going to refurb Smokey and bring it back to life so I have two 1050 drives. And I'm going to see what I can come across. I think my Coleco, my spare Coleco Atom drive has that. So I will have to look for that. We'll see what we can find. Okay, so I went digging and I found me an old... It's a half height, full height IBM drive, but it has all the parts it needs. It has the LED there. That's this one right here. Um, well, it don't have all the parts. It doesn't have the track zero sensor, or does it have it somewhere else? No, it doesn't have a track zero sensor, so I'm going to have to see if I can fix that. But this gets me closer, so let's replace that part with this part here okay so we're just going to remove so this is the LED that came out of there you really probably can't see it I was tempted to curious if I could just put another LED in which I probably could because it's not the sensor it's just the light the sensors underneath but let's just see if I can find one to replace it with. I still don't know what is positive or negative on that. Okay, so there's our light there. And it's permanently in that. Darn it. I don't want to destroy anything. But I do need this. I don't know what is positive or negative on that, unless I apply some power to it. You know what? I'm going to have to do that. Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to put this back in here where it was. Before I go any further, I'm going to reassemble it completely so I can apply some power to it. And then from there, I can find out what is positive and negative on that and see what I can do after that. So let's go ahead and continue reassembling this and then I will put everything back together and test out under power and see what we got. 
So I need this board back. I removed this board so I'd have the ability to get in there closer and look around. I don't want to go too far down because well I could still get to the wires here okay so if I assemble it further I could still go okay plug this in here I should disconnect it so I can find out who does who. I wonder. Maybe those two aren't used. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's remove the zip tie, zip lock, or the zip ties, and see what we have here. Maybe we're gonna get lucky. Maybe they weren't used, and that's why they were just loose and it didn't matter. Let's see. See, these are the two wires for the sensor, and they appear to be the pin one and pin two of the, okay, that's those two, that the sensor is on that one there. Now let's find the loose wire we have here, and, what's, and that's this one over here. I'm pretty sure all four of these wires on number three. Yep, okay, so number three is the track zero sensor, First two wires in number two are the index hole sensor. So yeah, we still do have to have those in there. So those are those there. So technically I can now chase down which is, as long as it's on, I can chase down which is um, ground, which isn't on this, using a continuity. So let's just try that. Well, you know, Maybe I won't be able to tell it that way. Let me try ground instead. Because it's quite possible that, you know, the case is going to be ground. So let's go to ground here. Okay, so this one's ground. You're not hearing it, but it is ground. Let me see if I can... That's ground right there, this one is. So we know that one's ground. Now my thought is this. Let me just grab something here. Now I have these LEDs right here. They're very bright. But it fits in the hole. Which one is ground? Which part, how can I tell what is ground? Let me Google that and find out. The ground is a short wire. So if I put that one on there and that other one on there, I could then put it in here and I should be able to do that. So let's let's do that. Ain't gonna hurt it, right? Ain't gonna hurt it. So let's put this in here.
what I'll do is I'll go outside and get some black with this black spray paint and put it on a Q-tip and just put it down on there. But for now, I'm going to leave it like it is so we can see the light. We can see the light. And I want to power it up and see what happens. Because all this may be for moot if it doesn't work. I may turn it on and I might get the magic smoke. So let's plug in the power supply and see. Gonna lubricate the rails with the sewing machine oil, which works really, really nice for lubricating them. Don't want to get this on the head at all. And then we'll go back and forth and Spread that lube back and forth and it should work really nice. Not a lot. We're not we're not coat we're not burying it in oil. We're just putting a little lube on it. That turns fine. Okay. So let's try it again. See it doesn't have the track zero sensor, so it can't it doesn't know it's in track zero. See? See that? Watch. Oh, it picked up. It was in zero there, I think. I'm tempted to plug her into the Atari and see what it does. So I'm going to shut this off. I'm going to go plug in the Atari, see if I see any life on it, see if it reads a disc. If it does, then we're going to move cameras. All right, so I plugged her into the Atari. She lights up, and because it does, it thinks it's that's it either thinks it's always on track zero or it's not. It doesn't go. It, it moves one notch and then sits there going forever. If I move it out, it just sits there going forever. So it thinks it's on track zero and it's trying to read track zero, and then it ends up giving me an error on here. I think it's G6 or something like that. I'll have to get the manual or see if there's a PDF copy of the manual online and fix it. But so let's see if we can just actually fix the track zero sensor. Like I said, I do have replacements for them. I might be able to just use it. What I'm going to do though is, because these do have an alignment and I'm, I'm going to mark exactly where that edge is all around so that when I put it back down it goes the same way. See what I did there? I marked it so that when I put it back down it goes in the same place. See what we have here is we have the piece of metal right there. Can I get this piece of metal to attach to that piece of metal? I might be able to. It doesn't look as hard as the other one. The other one was like flush but this one's got plastic around it. The other one was flush on a metal contact. I'm not sure if you, am I going to be able to work around it? That's the question. Might be able to give you a close up like that. Okay. Give me this. Awful lot of work I'm doing to wire attach one wire, it seems. Alright, so what I've done, I don't know if you can tell or not, but what I've done is I've nipped back the plastic to expose the post better. What I'm going to try to do now is put a little bit of solder on it and then after that yeah I was able to put solder on it then after that attach the wire there we repaired it 
thing perfect, but I did attach it back on there, so I repaired that part. So now I can put that on there, back on there, and I'll test and see how it works. So I'm going to turn off the portable camera, and we will reassemble a thing. I have yet to find out the LED is working, going to work or not. So that's reattached. Now, I'm gonna shut us all up here and I'm gonna go test it again. And if it works, we'll fully reassemble it. Then we'll go to, back to the Atari and see how it does. All right, so I wanted to show you it all hooked up before I took it back in the other room and reassembled it. So I, I got a, an 810 master disc in here. We power it on. The LED is bright, but it works, and if you notice, everything moved, it lit up. Sounds like it might need a little, see, it just ran through the whole tracks, looked at it all, now. Oh, and I get an error that time, last time I didn't get an error. Let's try that again. Turn it off. Interesting. It didn't do that last time. Let's give her a shot again. Power it down. Power up. Oop. Power on. It booted the first time I put it in. Now I'm getting a G4 error. What the hell does that mean? Does that mean that you ruined my disc? Because if you did, I'm going to be pissed off at you. G5. And G4. Okay. Let's try it again. See, it's going through the process of reading the different tracks. Hey, I got a... It did boot that time, did it? All right, it did work. So, she is working. Alrighty. Let's reassemble her then. Sorry for the shake again. Alright, so, as we just saw, she works. Yes. That is awesome. So now let's put all the wires back together and out of the way. All right, so it looks like my SD card is full on my one camera, so we had, we lost that. But we're just about done here. And here she goes. The Percom is fixed. We did a. Quick and dirty repair, which actually worked out very really fine. So now the per, per I keep saying percom. The indus is fixed, and now the indus is going to go out there with the rest of the system. Have a great day.